G'day, it's Pete here and I'm back for a featured lesson. Now today I'm going to be talking about how bridge scoring actually works. It's pretty complicated, but I'm going to break it down so that we can actually understand it. So there's three main things that I want to cover today. The first one is match points or pairs scoring. The second one is imp scoring, which is usually related to teams. Now, match points being pairs, it's not always, but that's what it's most commonly associated with. And imps being teams, not always, but that's what it's associated with. So uh, it's important to understand how match points actually work and how imps actually work. But before we actually get into that, I want to talk about uh, scoring a hand. It's important. How, does, how do you actually score one bridge hand? Without any actual comparisons, what, what do you actually get for playing it? And then I'm going to finish off with talking about what, what are your aims in match point scoring and what are your aims in imp scoring. Alright, so scoring a bridge hand. Let's break it down. So what you actually get is you get a score for the tricks that you actually get and then there's a bonus for where you actually bid to. So what are the trick scores? So whether you're in clubs, uh, whether you're in a minor, a major, or no trumps, the value of the tricks actually varies based on that. So if you're in a minor, you get 20 points per trick you get above uh, the reserve. So the reserve six tricks. So uh, if you bid to one club, you're already assuming you're making those six tricks. So uh, you get the trick value for any trick you score past the first six. So you get 20 for... Uh, making one, you get 40 points for making two of them, and so on. Whereas for a major, you get 30 points per trick. And for no trumps, you get 40 points for the first trick, and then 30 for subsequent tricks. Now, the importance of the trick score comes to associating where the game bonus is, and how they actually work out what the level of the game bonus is, is when your trick score actually reaches 100 points. So notice that in no trumps, if you make three no trumps, you get 40 for your first trick and then 30 for the subsequent ones. So at three no trumps, you've reached 100 points and that's why you get the game bonus. In uh, a major, you get 30 points per trick. So you need to get to the four of a major before you cross that 100 point barrier. You actually get to 120 points and then you'll get that game bonus. Whereas in a minor, you have to make it all the way to the five level before that reaches 100 points. So that's a bit about the origins of where the game bonus actually comes in and how the trick value actually associates with that. The next thing that you have to work out in working out uh, your bridge score is uh, what bonus do you actually get? So if you make your contract, you get a bonus. So depends if you're in a part score, which is below game, you make it to a game contract, you make it to a slam contract, or you make it to a grand slam contract. Now, if you're not vulnerable, um, oh, oh, sorry, if you're not vulnerable or vulnerable in a part score, it doesn't matter. You get the same 50 point bonus. Whereas if you are vulnerable or not vulnerable, it matters a lot for game, slam, or grand slam. Now, for game contracts, you get an extra 300 points instead of. Uh, you don't get all the subsequent bonus, you don't get the part score bonus and the game bonus and so forth. You just get one of these. But if you get the not vol game bonus, you get 300 points. If you've got a vulnerable game bonus, 500. Uh, for slam, it is 800 for not vol and 1250 for vol. And for grand slam, it's 1300 not vol and 2000 vulnerable. Yeah, you don't need to remember these off by heart, but it's just so that you understand a bit about the scale of this. Okay, so for getting these bonuses, you actually have to bid to those level and then get the trick score. Any uh, extra tricks that you get over tricks are just worth the original trick score, but they don't actually add to getting this bonus. So this is the two main parts that make up uh, your bridge score by itself. So uh, do you get your trick score? What did you bid to? Did you get the bonus? You add those together and this is actually how you compare a score. So if you bid to four hearts, uh, not vulnerable, and you made 11 tricks, how this would actually work is you made um, 11 tricks. So uh, you got five times uh, 30, which is uh, 150. 
and you bid to game, so you get the game bonus, not vol, so you, that's the extra 300, so you get a score of 450. So this is how you can actually work out uh, those scores. When you actually go down though, uh, if you're not vulnerable, you lose 50 points per trick you go down. If you're vulnerable, it's 100 points per trick. But if you get doubled, what it is, is you, not vol, it goes one, then three, then five. So uh, not vol, it starts off, you lose 100 points per trick, and then you lose 200 points per trick for the next two, and then it scales up to losing 300 points per trick. Whereas when you're vulnerable, it starts off as minus 200, and then you just lose 300 points per trick uh, there on after. This actually changed a little while back because it used to be that if you're not vol, uh, you just lost 200 points per trick, and it meant sacrificing at the grand level uh, was a really good idea. So they had to up this back. I think around the 80s sometime, this actually changed. Uh, so this is how doubled under tricks work. And the final thing I want to talk about is uh, doubling. Uh, so if you get doubled and make your contract, what actually happens is you double the trick values. So uh, we'll go back to the trick score. Your tricks are now worth double. Now, if your trick score now reaches 100 earlier, so let's say that we we're in two hearts doubled, um, our trick score is now worth 120 if we make it. So we'd get uh, a game bonus. Even though we didn't actually bid to game, our opponents have doubled us into game because of that. You also, if you make the contract, you get a 50 point bonus for the insult. I just love that. Just the insult of being doubled and being made. You get an extra 50 points. So if you're in two hearts doubled, not vulnerable, and we made just two. So here, the trick score is now worth 60 points per trick, so it's 120. We'd get the 50 for the insult, which is 170. Um, and then we get the game bonus for not vol, which was an extra 300, so 470 for being in two hearts double. So this is how you can sort of work it out. Now, you don't need to remember all of these off by heart, but it's a good idea to understand how they fit together and why they actually fit together. And then you'll slowly pick these up. So that's how you actually score just one bridge hand. Um, now we actually want to get into the meat of like, how does the bridge scoring work in comparisons with match points and with imps? So let's talk about imps first. So what happens with imps is you get two comparisons. You just compare with one other person and it matters how big your score difference actually is. So if you, if the difference was between 0 and 10, you get no imps. So what you can see here is that from 0 to 10, the imp's worth 0. Whereas if you got like a game swing, where you score somewhere in the 450 points, then you actually get uh, 10 imps for that. So you, you compare, you work out what your score was, what your opponent's score is, work out what the difference is, and that's how many imps you can actually get. So it goes all the way up to 24 imps, so each board can have a huge swing, and like the Grand Slam choices are really important, game contracts are important, whereas part scores, they scale a lot less. Whereas in match points, what it is, is just a comparison of how many people you beat. Now, it doesn't matter if you beat them by a thousand points, or if you beat them by ten points. As long as you've got a higher score than them, you've actually beaten them. But what match points does is you can have more than one comparison. So if you have 10 comparisons, um, so there's you and nine others. If you beat all the other people, you get 100%. Uh, if you lost to everyone, you get 0%. So it works out how many people did you actually beat and puts it into a percentage. Now, the way it usually works is uh, we'll bring up a comparison a smaller one. Let's say that there is actually just two opponents. So here we've got your score, we've got the opponent's score one and the opponent's score two. Okay. If you beat them, you get two points. If you draw, you get one point. And if you lose, you get no points per person you beat. And then out of four, what we do is we give this a percentage. So on hand one, our score was 620. Uh, one opponent got 170 and one opponent got 140. So we get two points for beating both of them um, twice, so we get four points and 100% on that first board. On hand number two, we scored 420, 
the next person scored 420 and someone else scored 430. So we draw with one person and we lose to the other. So we would score one uh, point, one out of four, 25%. Hand number three, we got 1430, uh, the opponent's got 680, and then the final opponent got minus 100. So we beat both of them. So again, we get 100%. And on hand number four, we got minus 110. Uh, they got, next opponent got plus 110 and then minus 100. Now we got the lowest score again, so this one would be 0%. So this is how you work it out. Usually it's with lots more comparisons though, and you work out how many people did you beat or draw. And even those 10 point difference actually matter. Now, if you're looking at imp scoring, uh, this would be 10 imps for the first board and zero imps for the second board. So uh, imps, there's a wide variety between how important certain boards are, but with match points, every single board is equally important. Now, they're both really interesting forms of scoring, um, and they've got different actual challenges. So let's talk about uh, what you're aiming to do, whether it be match points or imps. So in IMPS, which actually stands for International Match Points, but uh, that's where the name IMPS actually comes from. Uh, IMPS, what you actually want to do is bid game really aggressively. Because if you can bid game, you, you don't need to make it that often. It's somewhere between like 35 and 40%, depending whether if you're not vol or vulnerable. Such that if you're vulnerable, you want to be bidding really aggressively to game. And if you're right on the line of bidding good games, then you'll be going down more often than you'd be making them because the reward is so good whenever you actually make it. Whereas in match points, the reward for bidding game isn't that, isn't that good. Like you want to be making game 50% of the time. Whereas in imps, you can be making it less than 50% of the time and still getting a good expected value out of it. So imps, bid game really aggressively, match points, you don't need to do it as much. The second thing is trying to make your contract. In imps, you really, really want to make your contract. You're not too worried about over tricks. So if you're in four hearts, making four hearts is your main priority. And secondary priority is can we make uh, extra tricks? Because an over trick might be worth about one imp. Whereas making or not making your game contract is usually worth around 10. So making your contract in imps, very important. Whereas in match points, making a contract isn't the most important thing. It's just beating your opponents. If everyone, if you make four hearts and your opponents are making uh, an extra trick, then you're actually losing the board and getting 0%. So here in match points, you wanna, over tricks are really important. So you want to go for over tricks, even if it risks your contract, if you think it's a above 50% proposition. So if you think that making an extra trick is uh, better than 50-50, then you should go for it, even if it will risk you going off in your contract. So match points, over tricks, really important. At imps, making your contract is really important. Other things about... Uh, match points is often you want to play in no trumps because no trump scores that 10 extra points for that first trick. So if you are making the same number of tricks in no trumps as you are in a suit contract, then you want to be in no trumps. So you really want to go for that. So at match points, if you bid to a slam, it's very often that you'll just try for six no trumps unless you think that's just a terrible idea uh, because that 10 point bonus uh, can swing a lot of match points. Whereas in imps, you just want to be in the safest slam because making your contract uh, is the most important thing and that zero to 10 difference isn't actually relevant. Anyway, uh, that's all I really wanted to cover today in talking about how bridge scoring works. Uh, we covered how to score an actual hand where we've got the trick score, the bonuses, and uh, talking a bit about doubles, whether it's making the contract with doubles or under tricks. Uh, we also talked about how match points works and how imps works and a little bit about the strategy behind it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this lesson on how bridge scoring works and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.